Central banks worldwide continue to pump trillions into the economy. And because of that, Bitcoin is about to resume its uptrend soon. At least that's what some people have been saying based on the fact that global liquidity is on the rise. You may have seen this chart floating around on crypto Twitter. Global liquidity, or commonly referred to as global M2, a metric to measure the amount of money circulating in the world is closely correlated to crypto and supposedly can be used to predict where the markets go next. But does that statement hold any weight? Well, in this video, we'll do our best to explain global liquidity in a simple way and look at its connection to the crypto markets. First, recall that liquidity simply refers to how easily money can move around. On a smaller scale, it might be how much cash a person has in the bank or how readily a small business can borrow. On a global scale, it often refers to the ease of financing across cross-border markets, which is a fancy way to say how easily money can be borrowed in major financial center economies, which includes the US, the Eurozone, China, the UK, and Japan. Because these nations serve as the world's core lenders, their monetary policies ripple outward, shaping how readily funds flow internationally. In turn, this affects how much people have to spend or invest. For example, if investors and banks from major economies have abundant capital and feel confident, money can surge into other parts of the globe, fueling expansion and speculation in stocks, bonds, and crypto. On the other hand, if uncertainty grows or central banks tighten credit in these hubs, liquidity can dry up and cause markets across the world to shrink. Now, like I mentioned earlier, one way to track this global liquidity is with the global M2 money supply metric. M2 refers to physical money in circulation, along with deposits in banks and money market funds. By aggregating individual M2 across major economies, we can get a sense of how much money is in circulation globally. However, money supply doesn't move on its own, and much of it depends on the policies of central banks and whether they're expanding or contracting their balance sheets. Simply put, when central banks are expanding their balance sheets through quantitative easing, or QE, it injects fresh funds into the economy. When balance sheets are shrinking during times of quantitative tightening, or QT, liquidity is pulled out. Now we can think of QE and QT as conditions that drive money supply up, or down, and watching the global M2 supply is a good way to see whether global liquidity is growing or shrinking. Now let's take a closer look at how all of this impacts crypto. Now we already mentioned how rising liquidity fuels speculation in risk assets, but crypto markets are uniquely sensitive to changes in global money supply as they trade 24 seven and are accessible to practically anyone in any nation. From 2013 to 2024, Bitcoin's price has a 94% correlation with global liquidity typically lagging behind M2 by about 10 weeks. That said, Bitcoin's correlation with global M2 can sometimes decouple due to crypto-specific events, as seen in the FTX crash, Luna collapse, and Mt. Gox hacks. As for altcoins, they usually benefit when liquidity trickles down from Bitcoin into altcoins, as investors rotate profits into riskier tokens with more potential for higher upside. However, they also fall harder than Bitcoin when there is a market downturn. The global liquidity surge in 2021 after the COVID crash is a great example of how risk assets benefit when Bitcoin ran up about three times up to 70,000, while altcoins like Sol saw gains of over 160x. Meanwhile, the crypto bear market of 2022 to 2023 coincided with the Fed's interest rate increase from March 2022 to July 2023, which saw global liquidity fall. Now that we've got a sense of how global liquidity works, where are we now in the global liquidity cycle? Well, keep in mind that the thing about M2 is that it inherently will continue increasing as long as banks continue to print money. If nothing breaks, periods of contraction are just 
corrections in the overall uptrend. After a brief dip in liquidity during the Fed's rate hikes, global liquidity started climbing again in October 2022, though at a slower pace than during the pandemic. Since the start of 2024, global M2 has grown by 5 trillion, and during this time, Bitcoin went from 44K to a new all-time high of over 100K. After a short contraction in September 2024, the uptrend resumed by the end of the year. Now, this is the part that netizens point to as the indicator that Bitcoin is set to rise along with the M2 once more. But if you're wondering how come altcoins have been struggling if global M2 is climbing, well, as observed by one analyst, it seems that altcoins only benefit when global M2 is rising faster than the global GDP growth, which we haven't seen in the past couple of years. Only that way is there enough excess capital to supercharge speculation and even riskier assets, which may explain why only Bitcoin, the relative safe haven within crypto, has benefited so far. Far. So we may want to watch when this trend flips to get a sense of when alt season might finally come around. To wrap up, while the 94% correlation between Bitcoin and the global M2 money supply is eye-catching, it's important to remember that correlation doesn't necessarily equal causation. The global monetary system is super complex and there is a lot of factors that we can dive into in this video. Things like regulatory changes, market sentiment, and of course geopolitical events can also impact crypto prices. That said, remember that an ever-expanding global M2 is a feature of the financial system itself. And as long as money continues to debase, it's likely that we will see a deflationary asset like Bitcoin remain tightly correlated with global M2. But of course, no one knows if this will last forever or if a major crash is on the horizon. But if something like that were to happen, Bitcoin's built-in scarcity could make it even more relevant. But we'll leave that up to you to decide. That's it for this video. If it helped you out, leave a like and subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.